The market trades in range. Is it setting up for the next push higher? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, we talked about the fact that the market pushed higher but pulled back correctively, so we were looking for a 4-5 setup to the upside. And yesterday, we saw mostly range trading with the market pushing up towards the highs at the end of the day, setting up for another leg higher. Now the question is, how high will the bulls take it? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the market trading in range, not a whole lot has changed, so let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. One thing I will note before we get started is we did have contract roll last night on TradingView, which means we are now on the September contract, which means you get a artificial gap up because those contracts are in the future and you have more time on them. So the trading values here are actually because of the contract roll. If I hit the B adjust button down here, you'll see everything shift to the downside and you'll see the gap from the contract roll right here. And... Uh, we were still down here in the 5,400 area. So this gap up is artificial. It's not a true market moving up like that. It's just the contract roll. Just to give you an idea of why the levels have changed. So as we look at this one hour chart, it does look like three is completed. We hit the 236 yesterday. They pulled back, uh, hit the 5475 area, which was the 236 retrace. Typically a wave four will come down to the 5445 or 382 retrace. I don't know if we'll get that low given that the move was as strong as it was. You have a good chop kind of sideways flag here, which is how it kind of wave fours play out. But the bear case early on, at least for the day, would be to have an A, B in place and then have one more push down into that 54, 45 area and then bounce back up for a wave five. So for a bearish path, meaning just a short term push down, not an overall bearish path, by the way. This would be if the bears were going to try to push it lower tomorrow, this would be the expectation uh, 54, 46, and then higher. Now, if they can get down through 54, 25, then the, the um, tone changes a little bit, and we'll have to see exactly what kind of structure we get and how deep they can push it. But 54, 25 is the 50% retrace of wave three, and we know that once we're below that, we rarely go back and finish that pattern in an impulsive way. So those are the key levels to the downside for the bears. If they can get through 54, 25, then we can start to pay attention. They're into this support at that time. And we can get down closer to that. It's now 5,400 basically because of the contract roll with that 5,330 level yesterday. Um, basically 5,400 level. Then they'd be approaching that. And if they can break through 5,400, then we can start talking about more downside depending on the structure and how that's going to look. So that would be the immediate downside path. The upside path is uh, that they've already made the way for low into the 236 here at 5,475. And they're trying to push up in five and we would continue. And that pattern would take us ultimately toward 55.31 to about 55.50 would be our target area. As high as 5,600, but I don't think we'll actually push up to that level. Um, 54 or 55.31 to 50 would be my target area for the push up here to complete that wave five. So overall, still just filling out the last few waves here. Uh, they did extend a bit in wave three, typical of a CPI Fed type move where you get uh, an over exaggerated move. So they did extend in three, you get a four pullback and then five up. And we'll look to see what happens at that point. I have stressed this over and over, and I'm not sure why some of you aren't still understanding that. We are looking for a top. There's no question about that. I've been talking about it for a long time, and I think it will be a major top. I still think that. I still There's nothing that has changed my belief. There's a lot of supporting evidence to that. Uh, stuff I talk about in my room all the time. But... Nothing is set in stone in the market. Nothing is a guarantee. And until we break support, we look higher. We will be bullish until the market turns over, but we are expecting a top. You know, until the clouds get here and it starts raining, we can expect rain, but until it starts raining, it's not raining. I know that sounds redundant, but some of you need to hear that. So we are expecting rain, right? Until the clouds get here and it starts raining, pressure remains up. All right, over on the NASDAQ, all right, on the NASDAQ, as you can imagine, very similar count. NASDAQ did not get quite down to its 236, which is at 19,677. So I could see where ES comes down and NASDAQ come down to the 236 on the NASDAQ and that 382 over on the ES. So I could see one more low before we do take it higher up toward the 
uh, 20,000 levels what we're going to be looking at. Again, these numbers are inflated because of contract roll, so it's not like we moved up 300 points overnight or 500 points overnight. It's that we are in a contract roll down here on trading view and move to the September contract. So the levels are still the same on the other contract. We just move them up because of the contract roll. So in essence, same counts. We're looking for 19,677. If the bears can break down through 19,370, then we can start to talk about something bearish. They really need to break down below this level here at 19,200, which is our previous low down there at the 18,940 level just moves up with the contract roll. So it is that 19200 level on the NASDAQ that the bears need to get through. If they get through that, we can start talking about a more bearish count and what kind of structure we have and what we're looking at to the downside. But until then, pressure is going to remain up. The target again, 19677 if they're going to get downside, but it's very possible. Wave 4 is already in. It's just a shallow 4, and we'd be looking at 5 up with the target of uh, 20,027 to 20,100 for this wave 5, and then we'd be looking for... Uh, the move down. Again, looking for a move down doesn't mean a move down is definitely going to happen. It means conditions are right for that. We have a lot of supporting evidence for that. Until they break support, this market is bullish and we look up and we are trading that appropriately in my room. So keep that in mind. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right over to the web page. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible monthly plans that both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there and check it out. I want you to make sure it's for you, be part of the trading team, interact with PT and I, and make sure it's something you love before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. You have nothing to lose by checking us out. We also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course and our Advanced Elliott Wave course. These courses are helping traders understand these complex patterns in the market and make sense of an irrational market. In the advanced course, we've been talking about expanded flats and diagonals and all kinds of different complex patterns that are very difficult to track. And this course walks you step by step through how to track each one of them. We draw them out for you, show you the FIB levels, go to the charts, look at them on the charts, how they work so that you can understand when these complex patterns are happening and you're not confused by the overall whipsaw of the market when they do happen. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is helping real traders. They love the course, and if you want to be part of that, you can. But if it's too advanced, I completely understand. If you're getting started with Elliott Wave, we also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. This course is helping real traders make real money and finally understand the market in a way that makes sense. This can be very confusing when good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up. And Elliott knew that the news cycles meant nothing long ago. He knew that the key levels mattered. And when these key levels held and when they broke, what happened? And this gives you a huge trading advantage over the rest of the market. This course is 25 videos where I go over three parts, your introduction, where we go through your mindset and emotion, your expectations, the KISS method, and why it works. Chart setup and tools, where we go through every tool you need with Elliott Wave, how to use it and why. And the Elliott Wave for beginners area, where we talk about each of the waves, how to measure them, how to find them, how to understand them, the corrective depth theory, the theory of alternation, the pivot, everything you need to make sense of an irrational market. Now, the cool thing about both of these courses is if you want to get them at a discount, we have our bundle package where you can get $37 off and get both courses for $177. Or if you don't want to pay anything at all, you can simply become a member of one of our monthly rooms and you get those courses for free. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as all of the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing and day trade, so we do trade quite often in my room. And if you're looking for individual stocks, futures trading, income trading, and advanced training you need to check out pt's throne room in there you get everything you get in the invest with jacob room as well as individual stocks futures trading income trading that's killing the market guys it's absolutely crushing it and his reduced risk binary method that gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money and it's how he structures that trade that's so unique something you have to see to understand and that's another reason we give you that seven day free trial he also started a challenge account where he put four thousand dollars into his account trading mini es futures showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, key takeaways for today. We have our key levels, 54.46 and 54.25. The bears can take it down to below that. Things start to get interesting for the bulls. They really need to hold that 5,400 level on the new contract. Remember, we're on the contract roll here. 
if they can hold the upper levels, we would look for a wave five to the upside, or they can go directly from where they are now. Wave four could already be in, and that target would be 55.30 to 50 to the upside. So um, as long as we're above 54.25, we would expect 55.30 plus, and below that, we would start to look at the structure and what's going on in the market. Over on the NASDAQ, same situation with your key levels being the 19.508 area and the 19.369 area. If they can stay above those two levels, we would expect them to push to 20,000, 20,100 area. If they cannot, things start to get interesting and we'd be looking at this 19,200 area next below that and it starts to get neutral to bearish and we have to look at the uh, pattern and what we have to the downside. Guys, it's the weekend. Grab yourself a drink, get out of the house, have some fun with your family. It's Father's Day weekend. All you dads out there, happy Father's Day. I am a lucky dad of two amazing kids. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you next week.